Um, so there's a, there's a starter question here. Um, and again, this whole section is on exponential and logarithmic equations. So we're actually going to be getting number answers to these problems. Some of the answers are going to look pretty wild, okay? but there's still going to be, it's going to be x equals this expression or x equals this number. But we're going to start off with a little starter question, just kind of as a, as a reminder and kind of a, a primer for what we're going to do here. So um, this says solve this. If we've got 2 equals x squared, uh, 2, 2 to the x squared equals 8, we want to be able to solve that. So just like we did on that last problem a second ago, we're going to take this and we're going to write both sides using the same base. So this is going to be, uh, let's see, 2 to the third. So if I write both sides using the same base, that's what I get. And then by logic, I can say, well, if this base is 2 and that base is 2 and the two expressions are equal to each other, well, then the numerators would have to be, or sorry, the exponents would have to be equal to each other. So this would be x squared equals 3. And then when I take a square root, I have to put a plus or minus on there. So the answer to this one would be either plus or minus 3, plus or minus radical 3. Ugly answer, but it would work, right? You could check it by plugging it into your calculator. Okay? And it'll actually make that equation true. Okay, if I have something like this, this is a little bit more difficult. Because this is saying 2 raised to a power equals 17. Let's see. 2 raised to a power equals 17. Well, it wouldn't be 1, because 2 to the first is 2. 2 to the second is 4. 2 to the third is 8. 2 to the 4th is 16, and then 2 to the 5th is 32. So it's somewhere in between 4 and 5. It's going to be a little bit more than 4, but if I can't figure this out, how could I write down an expression for this that would tell me what x is? Remember those four statements I asked you to uh, kind of keep in mind when we're dealing with logarithms? Logs are another way to write exponentials, right? The answer to a logarithm is an exponent. If you're having trouble in exponential form, write it in logarithmic form. And if you're having trouble in logarithmic form, write it in exponential form. Well, what form is this in right now? It's in exponential form, OK? So what form could you write it in? Logarithmic, yeah. Mm -hmm. right, on this one right here? What do you what do you mean? Um, shouldn't x be equal to one point five since um, then there's a power raised to a power you multiply? Um, if it were if it were that in parentheses and it would be two x, but this is actually x squared. Okay, so that x squared is the exponent. Okay, it's not uh, two to the x squared. It's just two to the x squared. It's, do you see the difference in what he's asking? So there's a difference between this and this. Okay, on this one, that is the exponent. Okay, on this one, if we have a power raised to a power, then we'd multiply them, and this would be 2 to the 2x. Then you'd be right. Then it would be 1.5. Okay, does that make sense? Good eye. Good question. Thank you for asking. Okay, anything else? Okay. So if this is an exponential form right now and we can't figure it out, let's write it in logarithmic form. So this would be log base 2 of 17 equals x. Okay. Now, this is an exact answer. Could I type that into the calculator? Not without changing the base. So our options would be to do the ln of 17 over the ln of 2 or the log of 17 over the log of 2. Remember, common log and natural log are the only two that are on our calculator. Okay? I'm going to zoom in on this one here so we've got a little bit of space to do this one. Um, on equation C, we've got to solve this. What we'd normally do with this one is we'd do cross multiplication. I'd multiply these together and these together. So this is going to be x plus 3 times x minus 1, and over here I'll have x plus 2 times x plus 6. Distribute through, so this is going to be x squared. This is plus 2x minus 3, and then over on this side I'd get x squared plus 8x plus 12. Correct me if I'm wrong. 
This looks kind of ugly right now, but there's an x squared on both sides, so I get rid of the quadratic part of this. And then let's collect like terms. I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides, and I'm going to subtract 12 from both sides. So that's going to be negative 15 equals, let's see, this is a 6x. So the answer on this one would be negative 15 over 6, or that's going to be negative 5 over 2. There's our answer. Okay. Now, do I have to be careful with this type of equation? Like, is this answer going to work in there? It will. That's the right answer, and we're going to keep that answer. Are there any numbers that would not work in this? Negative 6 and negative 3. You've got to be careful about the domain of the original functions we're working with. Okay? So we'd have to be a little bit careful on something like that. And if we were solving an equation like this, Whenever we solve an equation, usually we're trying to get the x term by itself. So the first thing I'd do is I'd move the 4 over. So I'm going to add 4 to both sides. So that gives me 2 radical x equals 14. I'm going to continue getting that x term by itself, so I'm going to divide by 2. And I finally get radical x equals 7. And then how do I undo the square root? Square both sides. So if I square this side and this side, I get x equals 49. I should double check and make sure, do I need to be careful with radicals, with even roots? Yeah, I better not, I mean a negative 49 wouldn't work here because then I'd get a non-real answer, okay? So you've got to be careful whenever you've got division and whenever you've got even roots when you're solving an equation, okay? Any questions there? Okay, and then I'm assuming that you can fill this in right here. Logs and exponentials of the same base are inverses of each other. They undo each other, okay? Just like when we squared to undo a square root and things like that, okay? So we're going to use these ideas of inverse operations and how we typically solve equations to learn how to solve exponential and logarithmic equations. So we know really well how to solve this one. I'd move the 5 over by subtracting. I'd get rid of the 2 by dividing by 2, okay? I'd get rid of the squaring by taking a square root, being careful that I put a plus or minus on there, okay? So I'm going to use similar ideas to solve exponential and logarithmic equations, but we're going to do some relatively simple ones first. So on example one, here's what we want to do. We're going to solve these equations by writing both sides using the same base and using an inverse function. So on this problem right here, we're going to write this as 2 to the x equals 2 to the 4th. And again, we're just going to use that logic that we've been talking about. If the bases are the same, and the exponent, then the exponent, and the two sides are the same, then the exponents have to be the same. So this would mean that x equals 4. Okay, this is called the one-to-one -one property of exponentials. Okay, if the bases are the same, okay, then the, the graphs would look exactly the same, and they'd hit the same point when we plug in the same number. Okay, so x would have to be 4 here. Okay. I also want to solve this using an inverse function. So if I want to get that exponent down where I can work with it, okay, what will undo exponential base 2? Log base 2. So just like here when I take a square root of both sides, I'm going to undo the exponential base 2 with a log base 2. So here's what I'm going to write, and I'm going to change colors for this. I'm going to write log base 2 of 2 to the x, equals log base 2 of 16. What does this function do to that function? Undoes it, right? They're inverses. So I get x equals, and on this side I have log base 2 of 16. Now, 2 to what power equals 16? Answer here is 4. Okay? And that's one that we can figure out in our head, a logarithm we can figure out in our head. Okay, I'm, I'm going to blow this up just a little bit more, and let me show you a different way to do this problem. Okay, because all logarithms have this same property. So what if I did this? What if I did the ln of 2 to the x equals the ln of 16? Okay, now does natural log undo log base 2? 
Nope. But what property do all logarithms have? What can I do with this exponent now? I can slide it out front. So I can write x ln 2 equals the ln of 16. This is a variable times a number equals a number over here. So if I want to get rid of the ln 2, what would I do with it? You just divide. So divide by ln 2 and divide by ln 2. So I get x equals the ln of 16 divided by the ln of 2. Now grab your calculator. Type in the ln of 16 divided by the ln of 2. Guess what you're going to get? You're going to get a 4. Okay. Not only that, that's just the change of base formula here. ln of 16 over the ln of the base. You get a 2 on your calculator, don't you? Okay, now, here's why that's advantageous. When I'm solving this problem right here, I can't solve this by writing both sides using the same base. Because 17 isn't a perfect power of 2. So what I'm stuck doing is I've got to use this inverse property. So I'm going to take the log base 2 of both sides. What does this function do to that function? Undoes. I get stuck on the fact that I always need to do a log base 2 to undo an exponential base 2 or vice versa. The cool part about logarithms is any logarithm will bring that exponent down where we can work with it. Okay? Can I type this into our calculator? No, nope. I've got to change the base, right? Okay, now your calculator will give you an answer if you do the ln of 17 over the ln of 2, or you could do log of 17 over log of 2, common log. Okay, I like ln a lot better. Okay, it's two letters, we use it more often, exponential base. So I'm going to solve this one the same way I did here. I'm going to take the ln of both sides. Slide this out front. That's x times the ln of 2 equals the ln of 17, all of which are numbers I can type into the calculator. And then to get x by itself, I'll divide by the ln of 2. So I end up with x equals ln 17. Whoops. 17 over the ln of 2. All the same number, all the same answer. The advantage this has is it can immediately be typed into the calculator. Okay, now, please keep this in mind. This is, this is where people start to struggle a little bit. That ln of 2 is a number. It's the exponent that goes on e to make a 2. You type it into your calculator, you get some ugly, ugly decimal for this. So let me let me go ahead and type this in. Clear that off. Number. Now we don't want to write 0.693314 over and over again. So get used to the fact that this equation right here is just like solving an equation like this. If I had x times 7 equals 14. Everybody would be able to solve that, no problem. This is the same thing. It's x times a number equals a number over here, so all we do is just divide by that number to get x all by itself. And again, the advantage we have is it's on our calculator. Okay? One last thing and then we'll be done for the day. Okay, if I'm going to solve this, this is relatively easy right here. If I have log base 3 of 4 equals log base 3 of 5x, if the logs, if they have the same base, then 4 has to equal 5x. So that means x equals 4 fifths, right? You do want to know that if you plug it back in, it makes the equation true. Okay? But here's another way to do this, using inverse operations. What function will undo log base 3? What function is the inverse of log base 3? Exponential base 3. So here's what I'm going to do on this one. I'm going to take each side and I'm going to raise it to be an exponent on a base of 3. 
this function and that function undo each other. On that side I have a 4. This function and this function undo each other, and on that side I have a 5. It's 5x. Five so I get the same answer either way. This is called exponentiating. Okay? It's called exponentiating. Okay? So let's add that to, to our vocabulary. If we have a single logarithm of the same base on one or both sides, you've got to have a single logarithm on one or both sides, we can exponentiate... Okay, exponentiate to undo the logarithm. So I'm going to solve this one using an inverse. Okay, what's the inverse of log base 8? Exponential base 8. So I'm going to put an 8 here and an 8 here. I'm going to raise both sides and put them in the exponent with a base of 8. What does that do to that? Undoes it. So I end up with x over here. And on this side, I just have 8 squared. So what's the answer? 64. OK? That's enough. Let that kind of cook. Take a look at that again. We'll start on this tomorrow, and we'll finish this up uh, tomorrow.